thanks for watching and so far in linear algebra we dealt with finite dimensional spaces like Rn or lines or planes where the dimension is finite and you may ask is there a space that has infinite dimensions and in fact there is and lots of them Today, I would like to focus on the quintessential example, which is just the space of sequences. So I call this R infinity, which is just sequences with values in R. And for example, you have the sequence, I don't know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, dot, 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 or I like this on the Fibonacci sequence. So let's say one, one, two, and then three, you sum them up, five, eight, 13, dot, dot, dot. Or I also like what I call this sequence. So one, two, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, which, I like to call Sia's sequence. You may say why? Because one, two, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, la 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 la. Anyway. <laughs> and by the way, I wrote integers here, it doesn't have to be. You could have, you know, like square root of two e1 minus 1 pi dot 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 so sequence is just with values in r and by the way you notice this is sort of a natural generalization of rn it's like r rn but with n being infinite now how can we show that a space has infinite dimensions remember what the dimension is it means that there is a basis with uh, infinitely many vectors. Now, although here it's easy to find a basis, in general, it's hard to find a basis for, um, for um, a space because technically what you need is the axiom of choice and then very complicated stuff. I mean, even think in terms of, let's say, continuous functions. What is a basis for continuous functions? How can you write any continuous function as a linear combination of other functions such that those functions are linearly independent? Pretty hard. That said, luckily, for infinite dimensions, we don't have to do this. Namely, it turns out there's a neat fact. All we need to show is that there, there's a linearly independent set that's as big as we want. So enough to show for all n, there is a linearly independent set, uh, Li set, with infinitely many elements, with a, at least n elements. In other words, what are we saying? We're basically saying for that um, for all n, the dimension of your set is greater than n. Because if you have a linearly independent set, a basis has to be bigger than that. So the dimension has to be bigger than that number of linearly independent sets. For example, let's take R3. Well, this set, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, well, this set is linearly independent, which means R3 is at least bigger than this set. It's at least two-dimensional, and in fact, it is three-dimensional. So here, what we want to show is for every n, our set is more than n-dimensional. And this is nice because linear independence is easier with finite sets. It's harder to define linear independence for infinitely many sets sets because you have you know the issue of you know convergence the issue of summing up infinitely many things okay like how can you take a linear combo of an uncountable set for example that would be hard even though this is countable 
So, in now, how can we answer that this is infinite dimensions? Well, here's our set. So fix n and let, I don't know, let b n just be the set what I call e1, e2, up to e n. Where e1 up to e n is just the analog of your standard basis vectors in R n. E1 is the sequence 1, 0, 0, dot, dot, dot. So infinitely many terms. E2 is 0, 1, 0, dot, dot, dot. And then, well, En is just 0, 0, dot, 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 except at the nth slot, it's 1. And this is much easier to show that it's linearly independent because let's in fact show it, so claim bn is linearly independent because, well, suppose a1, e1, maybe let me write it in vectors, a2, e2, plus dot dot dot, plus an, en, equals to the zero vector, and here the zero vector is the zero sequence, well, what this means is that a1 times 1, 0, 0, plus a2 times 0, 1, 0, dot, 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 plus dot, 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 plus a n times 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, equals to the 0 vector, which is just the sequence that does nothing. And then the nice thing is, we are dealing with finite sums. So finite sums are completely fine. And in fact, you can show that this is the same thing as a1, a2, dot, 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 a, n, and then 0, 0, 0, etc., etc. And that equals to 0, 0, 0. And then you just compare. You get a1 is 0, a2 is 0 and a n is zero. So in fact, we assume that this gives you zero and we find the coefficients are zero. Therefore, this set b n here, it's linearly independent. So for every n, we found a linearly independent set, which means your space is infinite dimensional. So in other words, it has infinite directions, if you'd like. And by the way, fun fact about this space, this space is actually the same, or in math we say isomorphic, to the space of infinite polynomials, or the space, if you want, of power series. Because, for example, let's take this sequence, 1, I guess, uh, 1 over, so 1 to 1, I think, One and then one. So one, one, I think one over two factorial. So this is one over zero factorial, one over one factorial, one over two factorial, one over three factorial, etc. etc. So the sequence one over n factorial, if you like, you can just associate this sequence to the power series one times one plus one times x plus. 1 over 2 factorial, x squared, etc., etc. 1 over 3 factorial, x cubed. You see, you can associate to a sequence a power series, and vice versa. Given a power series, you can just have the sequence of coefficients. And this is the same thing, in this case, as the function e to the x. So there is a, a connection between R infinity, so the space of sequences, and if you like the space of infinite polynomials, or in calculus you call this power series. And in math we call this isomorphic. So uh, it's easy to go from R infinity to power series and from power series to R infinity in a linear way, which is nice. That's something else. That's for more abstract, more advanced linear algebra, which I'll do next quarter.
All right, so I hope you liked this infinite dimensional excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.